Hello, my name is Jeff Hyatt and I'm a lecturer at the University of Leeds and today I want to talk about bonding and more specifically the question I want to deal with is what type of bonding is present in a crystal of aluminium oxide? Is it ionic, covalent or both? And how do we know? I quite like this question because of that third option. Is ionic, covalent or both? It recognises, as we all should, that ionic and covalent represent just two extremes of bonding which are rarely found in their ideal form. In reality, most bonds have some degree of intermediate character. So a covalent bond in the ideal form would have a pair of electrons equally shared between two atoms. As we move away from that ideal, we would have a situation where the electrons are not shared evenly and have one atom having a slightly negative charge and the other a slight positive. And that is, of course, the polar covalent bond, and it has a degree of ionic character. In contrast, the perfect ionic bond occurs when you get complete transfer of electrons from one atom to another to form negative and positive ions, which are then attracted to each other, forming the ionic bond. However, as we move away from that ideal, the positive ion can distort or polarise the electron cloud of the anion, pulling electrons back towards itself and introducing a degree of covalency. If we return now to aluminium oxide, we might ask, is there any way if we can tell if it is ionic or covalent by considering its macroscopic properties, the melting point, the solubility, the conductivity, those properties that we can investigate and measure in the laboratory. Well, aluminium oxide, or alumina, as it's sometimes known, is a white solid with an extremely high melting point in excess of 2,000 degrees, and it's insoluble. A-level textbooks often introduce the different types of bonding by listing their properties. So ionic compounds are soluble in water and have high melting points, while covalent compounds have low melting points and are insoluble. So alumina, with its high melting point and low solubility, matches neither of these simple descriptions. These are useful rules of thumb to correlate bonding with properties, but they certainly aren't definitive, and numerous exceptions are known. So for example, we have silicon dioxide. This is a covalent compound, which has a very high melting point, and we also have covalent compounds like methanol, ethanol, and ammonia, which are all soluble. Ionic compounds can also be insoluble, for example, calcium and barium carbonate. And we now also know of ionic liquids, which, as their name implies, have such low melting points they're liquid at room temperature and yet still contain ions.